มสาระความรู้ก่อนคลายได้ที่ RSU วิสตอนทีวีทางระบบทีวีดาวเทียมหรือผ่านแอปพลิเคชัน RSU วิสตอนทีวีดาวน์โหลดแอปพลิเคชันได้ที่ Google Play และ App Store Back to the program into ASEAN interview. If you are a commuter who flies around right. a lot, well, we would know in Thailand that the industry has experienced a lot of ups and downs exactly. lately. But today on ASEAN interview, an expert will tell us about the outlook of the aviation industry for ASEAN with several niche markets expanding. Right. ครับในช่วงนี้นะครับช่วง ASEAN interview นะครับจะไปพูดคุยในประเด็นเรื่องของธุรกิจการบินอุตสาหกรรมการบินอนาคตในอาเซียนเราจะเป็นอย่างไรครับติดตามเลยครับ Welcome to the ASEAN interview with me, Lisa Alisa Sitiwong, in which today we are here at the Aviation Institute of Rangsit University. We'll be talking to Air Marshal Professor Pud Lab Yem Jeron, the Associate Dean of Student Affairs of the Aviation Institute, Rangsit University. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ So today we'll be talking a little bit about the aviation industry in the whole ASEAN region, as we know that, of course, we are now entering into the AEC, and of course, various businesses and As well as industries are being affected by it, can I first ask you, what is your overall opinion about the aviation industry in the ASEAN as a whole? Uh, first, we have to look back about 10 years or 20 years, uh, as the traveling uh, today is uh, booming, and the uh, Middle East uh, country they expand their fleet. And expand the route to Thailand or to uh, uh, ASEAN, and they need more uh, pilots. Also here in this region, we also uh, expand uh, this fleet and expand the uh, aviation industry, and we need about uh, the expert said about uh, 200,000 of uh, pilots in the next 10 to 20 years. But now. In Thailand, we have only th uh, th uh, 3,000 uh, pilots, and they are most of all in the uh, Thai International uh, Airways. But uh, in the last 10 years, uh, as the Middle East Air Airlines, they expand their uh, fleet, and many pilots uh, uh, decide to go overseas and work over there. And that's come to uh, the problem of uh, lack of pilots now. So right now, the expansion of the aviation industry is expanding very fast um, due to AEC and also from the Middle East. And at the moment, you're saying that there's a very big lack or shortage of pilots these days. Now, there's this one concept about open skies or single market policy. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And, and does that affect its expansion? Why is it expanding so much? Does it have an effect from the open skies or one market policy? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, this open Open, uh, open sky uh, has a very big impact to to us because uh, in Thailand there is there are only uh, three thousand uh, pilots uh, are active now, like I said mm -hmm. before. But uh, every year uh, we can only three hundred uh, pilot training, uh, so they can uh, go into this business and uh, the. Uh, Another uh, country, they also have a, a pilot training program, but uh, here in Thailand is uh, more effective than another uh, country. Just like in China, they expand their fleet uh, very rapidly, but uh, the uh, pilot training school is only a few. We also have only a few uh, pilot training uh, school 
or academy. But uh, this uh, can uh, train the pilot about uh, 300 pilots per year mm -hmm. and we require about uh, more than 500 per year and this is come to the lack of pilot. But actually, uh, the pilot uh, who are active uh, flying a plane or experienced pilot, they have enough. But uh, after expanding the business, uh, many pilots uh, uh, go to overseas, go to the Middle East, mm. and some uh, low-cost airline was uh, uh, established. And so that uh, the low-cost airline, if they establish, they got to have a, a complete or perfect pilot and experienced co-pilot. And they have to offer a higher uh, salary than uh, the uh, company the, they worked before. And this is uh, not to resist. So are there, any, are there any policies or methods in order to help to assist with the lack of uh, supply in pilots or any policies to help each airlines be more competitive? Oh, uh, it is uh, uh, very good uh, to, uh, to, to say that uh, if uh, all airlines are able to uh, train their pilot themselves, mm -hmm. it is very good and uh, this uh, problem will not uh, there, but uh, just only a few uh, airlines can or are ready to train their pilot themselves, just like uh, Thai International or uh, Asia or Bangkok Airways. And uh, if the government uh, help by reducing cost of training, because cost of training is very high. Yes. For example, for a pilot uh, training program, it costs about 2.8 uh, million baht, and not everyone can afford it. For the whole course? For the whole course, yes. In order to become a pilot, you have to have 2.8 million for the course. Yes. It's actually quite high. Yeah. If, you, uh, if uh, the government help uh, by uh, re re uh, reducing this cost, and we can uh, train uh, more pilot and uh, more uh, student who are able to be a pilot can uh, can go, uh, come to uh, be trained. What about other ASEAN countries? Are they also facing a shortage in pilots as well? Uh, actually, uh, they also have a, 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 a pilot training uh, institute, but uh, they, they may offer a higher uh, salary and Thai uh, pilots are uh, a very high uh, quality of pilots, so uh, they, they cannot uh, deny a higher uh, salary. And this uh, airlines, a uh, foreign airline, will not uh, uh, have the crisis just like in Thailand. So what about, low, you mentioned low-cost airlines, and there's also a kind of a demand for professional pilots um, with higher pay, but then, then again, low-cost airlines need to save costs. How, how do they work about this, and what, what is their situation at the moment now? Oh, uh, if low-cost airlines is established, it's simply know that uh, they have to uh, get the experienced pilot and experienced co-pilot so that they can uh, make money and make profit uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they can uh, do it by offering a higher salary from an another uh, uh, airlines, just like Thai International or uh, Asia or Bangkok Airways. Yeah. And uh, if they uh, become a pilot uh, from another uh, airlines, Another airline will short of pilot yes. also, mm -hmm. and this uh, number of pilot are all in the same uh, cycle. Mm -hmm. And if they don't uh, do anything by uh, training new pilots or let the new pilots uh, or the uh, junior pilot to go in this uh, business, this crisis will also remain there. 
So therefore, you say that uh, because they remain in the same cycle here, big airlines try to recruit, low-cost airlines try to recruit these professional pilots. Is there a problem within the recruitment sector of the aviation industry? Are people finding it hard to find jobs as new pilots as well? Yes, uh, for new pilots, they will uh, get uh, very difficult because uh, some uh, airlines uh, said that uh, for the new pilot, they require about 500 uh, fly hours. Mm -hmm. And the new pil uh, the, uh, pilot uh, who uh, finish from the flying institute, they don't have that they yet. Don't have, yeah. they, don't, uh, they have only 200 uh, mm -hmm. hours. And where can they get this uh, experience pilot with 500 hours? From the Air Force. Ah. From the Air Force, because the Air Force, uh, the pilot are, uh, in the Air Force, they uh, fly planes about five years and they ac accumulate uh, fly hours mm -hmm. more than 500. And therefore, this is uh, 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 the thing lead to a lack of pilot in the Air Force too. Ah. Okay, so basically, we need to we need to recruit. We need to have more people interested in becoming pilots, and we need to have more opportunities for them to be able to become professional pilots as well. Now, if we talk about the aviation industry and training schools mm -hmm. within the ASEAN region, are there a lot of training schools? Uh, in ASEAN, there are a lot of training schools. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in uh, Malaysia mm -hmm. or uh, in Langkawi and uh, Indonesia, but uh, to, to work here in uh, Thai uh, Airways, they require uh, bachelor degrees. It is another thing uh, than another uh, airlines. And uh, I think uh, to become uh, this uh, young people, to be a pilot in uh, the uh, uh, aircraft industry, uh, they have to low uh, the requirement about uh, from 500 hours fly, uh, flies out to 200 fly hours to that little requirement uh, for young uh, pilots or junior pilot. And what about in Thailand? Is there a lot of aviation institutes? Uh, we have about uh, five or uh, six uh, aviation institutes, but the most famous, uh, famous here is, uh, in, uh, is only two. Mm -hmm. One is the Department of Civil Aviation Center, mm -hmm. and second is Bangkok Aviation Center. But all together of them, they can uh, only uh, train a new pilot, a, young, a junior pilot, about 300 to uh, 350 a year. So do you think it would be possible to have more institutes emerging in order to create more pilots in the future? Uh, it, it is uh, very good if we can do that, but uh, we are helping out the government because to uh, establish a new uh, pilot uh, training uh, institute, we need a lot of money, not only the uh, airplane, also the instructor. Mm -hmm. The instructor uh, now is lack too because uh, some instructor uh, go to uh, overseas or to uh, this airline, uh, uh, airlines here in Thailand because uh, they have uh, an opportunity and um, uh, uh, better salary. Mm. And this, uh, if the government uh, doesn't do anything, this problem will be uh, there. And and with helping from the government, uh, we can. Uh, uh, do is better and uh, this problem will be permanently uh, solved. And here, we're here at the Aviation Institute actually of Rangsit University. So you mentioned that there are a total of five altogether in Thailand. This is one of them. This is uh, one of them, but uh, we have the MOU with uh, uh, three institutes. One is uh, uh, Bangkok uh, uh, aviation Center, mm -hmm. second is the uh, Civil Aviation Center, and two in uh, 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 abroad in Canada is this uh, uh, Gander Flight Training School, mm -hmm. and the second in America, in Florida, is uh, Aerosyn. And each year we send about uh, eight uh, students to Aerosyn and eight uh, young uh, 
young uh, student to uh, uh, Canada and about A2 to uh, Civil Aviation Center and the rest they have to uh, be trained uh, in uh, Bangkok Aviation Center. It is the uh, first MOU with our university. How long has this been established for the Aviation Center here? Ah, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, our president of the Rangsit University, mm -hmm. Dr. Atit Urairat, and the dean of the Aviation Center, Ashif Marshal Khatatip Kunchora. They acknowledge that uh, this uh, business will expand uh, rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so they established uh, the Aviation Center since uh, 2006. Beginning ten with years. Yes, 10 years. Mm -hmm. This year is the 10th year anniversary. Wow. All right. Well, today we got to know a lot about the aviation industry, especially in terms of the shortage of pilots within the ASEAN region and in Thailand as a whole as well. And plus, we got to know a little bit about the Aviation Center here at Rangsit University. Thank you very much, Air Marshal Professor Poon Lab, for this very lively conversation. Kap Kun Ka. So that was the ASEAN interview for this week in which we got to know a little bit more about the aviation industry. Of course, as the AEC has expanded and countries are coming together, integrating in various aspects, both economically, in businesses and various industries as well, the aviation industry is also being affected as well. So there's a shortage in pilots as um, professor has said, but as well as there's a lot of pilots being produced in Thailand as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the ASEAN interview and I'll see you next time. I'm Alyssa Siti Wong. Sawati Ka. And thank you very much for those insights into the aviation industry around ASEAN. And that wraps up the show for this week. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again very soon next week. For now, สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ